Hey there, another day and another Dollar Tree light bulb teardown. This particular bulb I found at Dollar Tree, it was of course a dollar. And uh, it seems to be a latest version. It's now April 2017 and I've seen this in a couple different Dollar Trees, so this one seems to be relatively common. 9 watts of usage, 60 watt equivalent, and 3000K. Interesting is it's, it's dimmable, 15,000 hours. But this is an interesting little bit here. Approved for use in totally enclosed fixtures. On the side panel here, it talks about the warranty, three years, which is quite interesting. They will give you your money back if you have the receipt. A dollar is the price of this bulb. And on the other side panel, it's the usual uh, nutritional information, or oh, AKA energy usage. It claims 800 lumens. 3000K again, and you know, some interesting stuff like shatterproof, damp locations is okay, enclosed fixtures is okay, dimmable, and light everywhere. Opening up the package, we have a pretty nice bulb here. Plastic base, plastic envelope, 9 watts, 800 lumens, 3000K, kind of everything that matches the box, 90 milliamps. It claims to be UL listed, so that's pretty good. That's actually some certification to make sure that it is not an unsafe and dangerous bulb. Testing the bulb here in a lamp seems to be relatively flicker free. We get very close to the camera here. You can probably see just a tiny bit of banding or beading, which is basically the frame rate of the camera, which is 60 hertz, matching the 60 hertz flicker of our mains electricity here in the United States. Right now the light you see here on my desk is being produced by the light bulb and it's okay. It's definitely, I can tell that it's 3000 Kelvin. I'd say that that's a relatively accurate uh, representation of the color temperature. It's, it's a bit lighter. Uh, colors like reds are a little bit muted with this light so it doesn't really have a lot of red. But overall the light seems pretty nice. It's, it's not green or blue tinted. It just seems to be lacking a little bit in the red department. Okay, I have my crappy kilowatt out. Sorry, it doesn't have any fractional watts. It just has whole numbers. Let's turn this on. It's supposed to be 9 watts. All right. 8 to 7 watts. That's not too bad. All right, power factor according to the kilowatt is 0.83. So not horrible, but also not perfect. From a heat perspective, I left this in the lamp for a little while, and of course the base gets warm, but that's about it. It seems to get as hot as any other typical LED light bulb these days. Now let's take a look at dimmability. Alright, so I have the bulb in the socket here. Exposure is locked. It's the right bulb. And this is for dimming test. Yeah, not too bad. The IKEA bulb is my favorite IKEA bulb is on the left. And it seems to dim quite well. If I turn off the switch with it dimmed all the way, let's see if it turns on. Yes, it does. Okay, with the bulb it's in the socket as the only one, if I dim. Yeah, no flickering, no issues whatsoever. It gets relatively dim. Let's turn it off and on with as it the only bulb. See if it starts. It does. That's nice. So dimming performance on these is good. All right, so to open this bulb, you go around it with your knife. You kind of slide it into the slot here, and you slide it around to cut the adhesive, and you kind of give it a little leverage to pop it out. So I have done that. Uh, as you can see here, just sort of use the usual silicon goop, but it, it also is definitely clipped in there. So once you pull this off, even though it won't be as safe because we've broken the adhesive, it will go back together fine. Taking a look at the LED board here, it seems relatively well constructed. It does require some hand soldering here, it doesn't use a connector, but that actually probably makes this a bit cheaper to make. It has 10 LED chips and seems like a relatively straightforward construction. So on the left here is the last uh, Dollar Tree bulb I tore down, as you can see. It's got 12 LEDs on it versus the new one with 10. The old bulb might have been a little bit more reliable due to these chips being driven a little bit less hard than the new ones. If we look very closely at these LEDs, you can see that there look like there are three chips inside each one of them. So that gives us 30 LEDs. Okay, here we are measuring the voltage of one of the LEDs, and like we thought, 9 volts. But what's interesting is this board is only being run at 45 volts. So it must be two strings of five LEDs run in parallel. That gives us the 90 volts that can run this entire board. I've removed the screws that hold the circuit board onto the base. And as you can see, there's copious amounts of thermal paste. That's great. They didn't skimp out on this, even though this bulb costs a dollar. 
All right, let's take a look at the construction of this bulb. We have the plastic envelope. We have the circuit board, which is aluminum backed with the LEDs on it. You have this metal plug where the circuit board sits onto to transfer the heat to, and then it's pressed into here. Now, even though this is plastic on the outside, it is metal on the inside, and I would imagine that this being pressed in transfers a good amount of the heat into this metal here. On the bottom, we have the usual Edison base here, which I had to kind of peel back to pull off. Looking at the base itself, we have the circuit board in here, and it actually has little plastic slots there, which hold this into position so it doesn't flop around. And here we have the power supply. One thing we notice right away is the output capacitor is rated for 130 volts. That's actually really good because, of course, this will get very hot. It appears to be a 63 volt, 220 microfarad capacitor, which is a decent rating, really. Taking a look at the board, it's got a standard topology, although I don't really see any input protection. This looks like a mob over here, but there's nothing right here on the input. The controller chip here has such bad markings that it's really impossible to tell who makes it. I, I just couldn't get it off. Here's a high-res picture of it, but I really wasn't able to find anything on Google from the numbers I could see. This definitely appears to be a non-isolated design. So if you have the cover off, don't touch any of these. This is probably reference to mains voltage. Comparing this power supply to the last 60 watt one from Dollar Tree, they seem pretty similar. The number of parts is very similar, other than this has a transistor on it and this doesn't. So this potentially is actually a cheaper design. The previous one does have a mob on the input, so that potentially is a little bit better. The last one was dimmable, but as you can see, the controller definitely looks different. Both of them are unreadable when it comes to part numbers. Dollar Tree has found another way to sell a very decent light bulb for one dollar. Some people have mentioned on my previous videos that there was probably subsidies involved, but here in Oregon at least, if you have a subsidy, it has to have a label on the shelf to indicate that, and I didn't see the Energy Trust of Oregon stickers here, so I don't think this particular bulb is subsidized. Anyways, if you found any of this useful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up, and uh, you can subscribe for more videos, and please put your comments and questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye.